Is that a new one for some of you? It's one of my favorites. Thank you, Praise Van. Yeah, Lighthouse, the good one. All right, so today's Bible story is about two brothers. Anyone have brothers in here? I see a few. So tell me a time, one of the families here, that you've played a trick on your brother. Any volunteers? Talk loud. I'm looking over here. I see some maybe good ones. All right. Your parents might speak for you if you don't. Any over here? Tricks on your brother? Oh, they're they're not able to to think right now. Okay. So yeah, that's a good one. So for those online who couldn't hear that, hiding around the corner with Nerf guns, and then when the person comes, you get them. Yeah, that's a good one. That's a good one. Any other uh, good tricks? Well, think about that. So it's really easy to play tricks, especially on your siblings, right? I have a younger sister. We would play tricks on each other all the time. And then uh, sometimes we would even maybe play a trick to get back at them for something that they did, right? So like, for example, if my sister scared me really bad during the day, I might wait until late at night to scare her back, right? Or sometimes... You play against each other to get something out of it. Like, if my sister did something bad, I said, well, I won't tell mom and dad if you, right? You do that one? I won't tell mom and dad that you did that if you do the dishes tonight instead of me, right? Things like that. So it's really easy to do that to our siblings. So Jacob and Esau in the Bible were twins, but they were very different And they had an interesting relationship. And this is a trick in the Bible that goes down in history. It's one of the the strangest Bible stories, I think, that we have in in our text. So let's take a look at our video today, see what it's about. God's story, Jacob and Esau. So part of God's story is about twin brothers, and it begins like this. Once, there were twins named Jacob and Esau, and they didn't get along. They actually started fighting before they were born. Then during birth, Esau came out first, but Jacob was holding on to his heel. That's not normal. And they even looked different. The Bible says Esau's body was covered in so much red hair, it was almost like he had clothes on. Jacob's skin was smooth. Well, they got even more different as they grew up. Esau hunted animals and spent time outside. Their dad, Isaac, was a big meat eater. So Esau was his favorite. Jacob, on the other hand, was a quiet guy who liked to stay indoors. Their mom, Rebecca, liked Jacob the best. The Bible doesn't talk much about Jacob and Esau as kids, but we do know Esau was lucky to be the oldest because he had what's called a birthright. That meant Esau would be in charge of their family, including all their money, land, and stuff. Jacob would probably have to work for his brother Esau, and their dad Isaac would give Esau a blessing, which means Isaac would ask God to take care of his oldest son Esau in an extra special way. Well, you probably think Esau was pretty excited about this, but he wasn't. In fact, one day he gave it up. He'd just returned from a hunting trip. Since he was out killing animals all day, he didn't have time to eat. He came home starving. Jacob was making stew, so Esau said, Quick, give me some of that stew. I'm very hungry. Now, Jacob was a little sneaky, so he didn't just share the stew with his hungry brother, which would have been nice. Instead, he said, First, sell me your birthright. And guess what? Esau said yes. It's a little like paying a million dollars for a bowl of mushy soup. We don't know why Esau did that, but the Bible says he didn't care about the birthright. But later, when Isaac was really old and about to die, he wanted to ask God to take special care of his firstborn Esau. So he told Esau to go hunting and make him some tasty food, maybe for the last time. Now, Esau wanted the birthright, so he left right away to hunt. Meanwhile, Rebekah had heard Isaac and Esau talking, and remember, Jacob was her favorite. 
she wanted him to get the blessing. So she did something really sneaky. She told Jacob, I will prepare tasty food for your father. You take it to your father to eat. Then he'll give you his blessing before he dies. See, Isaac was blind. She was telling Jacob to pretend he was Esau. But there was a slight problem with her plan. First off, Esau was hairy. So if Isaac touched Jacob's smooth skin, he would know the truth. The Bible says Esau had a certain smell too, which might be a polite way of saying he stunk. I mean, imagine how smelly a guy would be if he was always sweating and getting dead animal blood stuck on his clothes and matted in his hairy skin. And this was before deodorant. So even though Isaac was blind, he might smell Jacob or touch his smooth arm and know the truth. Well, Rebecca was sneaky like Jacob. She told Jacob to put sheepskin on his arms and wear some of Esau's smelly clothes. Now Isaac would never know. And even though Isaac wondered why the voice sounded like Jacob, guess what? The trick worked. Jacob got the blessing. Now Esau would have to work for him. As you might imagine, Esau was furious. In fact, Rebekah had to help Jacob run away so Esau wouldn't kill him. What's really crazy about this story is Jacob messed up big time but he really did get God's blessing. Esau even forgave him later. We don't know why God let this happen, but the truth is we all mess up sometimes and God still wants us to be part of his story. And that's the story of Jacob and Esau. Woo! <laughs> did you get all that? Yeah, some, some sneaky business there, right? How many of you are older siblings? I am. My sister's younger. I got a few older siblings. Praise band, older siblings, yeah. So back in the day, the older sibling got the best stuff, right? The most money, the most honor and respect, the blessing of the family. Luckily today, it's a little more equal than that, right? But can you imagine selling your birthright for a bowl of soup? What do they say? It'd be like, it'd be like having a million dollars versus a mushy bowl of soup, yeah? So we're talking about patience during this month. And do you think that if Esau had had more patience, he may not have been tricked into that? Yeah, I'm seeing some nods. Yeah. So if we don't wait for what's really supposed to be ours, it might cost us. That's what we're talking about today. And also about families, to show mutual respect to those in our family, and that's sometimes a lot harder than it sounds, isn't it? Because sometimes we do get angry with our siblings or even our moms and dads and grandparents, and we get mad. But it's still important to be patient and to show respect and love one another as best as we can. Let's pray. God, we know that it's hard to be patient, and especially with family members that oftentimes will make us mad or disappoint us or whatever the issue is. But God, we know that we are all yours and that we are beloved and that we have a greater purpose for our lives. So sometimes when we're having, a tr having trouble waiting, remind us that you offer us peace in those moments and that we can remember to wait and know that what you have is so much greater than what we could ever imagine. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen.